everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of Coffee Time with Mr. Yin. So, we'll skip the coffee. Let's get right to the point. Uh, got an interesting news today to share with you guys. Uh, apparently, there's a new release from Hugging Face uh, regarding Package Transformer Reinforcement Learning, or also known as TRL. Now, the package supports the uh, functionality uh, if you're doing uh, supervised fine tuning, right? You use the SFT trainer and you're tossing data set. Uh, you can fine tune your model, specifically language model, uh, to try to learn from a data set, to predict the next token according to what the data set consists of. And of course, the benefit of that is you can use custom data. Now, with this new release, it actually allows you to uh, pretty much customize your data uh, by using a predefined JSON schema uh, that allow you to actually enter all of the tools that you want. Uh, so in other words, it's not just about language. Uh, it's also about the name of the tools, the definitions that you will be needing in the JSON schema. And if you just enter all that in the JSON schema, which in the uh, training data set, then you can use this uh, functionality uh, using the TRL package, specifically with this new release, to essentially fine tune any large language model or small language model to learn the name of those tools. So that makes things very convenient downstream, right? And then what this really means is it's a shakeup of the agentic framework. So why do I say that? Here's what I mean when I say it's a shakeup. I'm talking in the sense of a SaaS company, right? SaaS stands for software as a service. What that means is before ChatGPT, before Chatbot comes into the picture, SaaS company has API flying around, right? Let's say there's a user interface and then you have your user onto your platform making some sort of decisions. They're clicking on the page, they're entering into some sort of information and then they hit the button and then the button triggered an API call and then this user interface will do something for them, right? Uh, run a credit score or hit on some sort of database so that it can compute some sort of result. So before large language model, a SaaS company should have a whole portfolio of APIs flying around. Why is LLM important? Well, it's important because then the customer can rely on the chatbot that's pre-trained to have that documentation ready so that when there's a problem, when they need to navigate this platform and when they need to click on those couple of pages, they have a guidance. They don't have to go to their boss or they don't have to read a 500 instruction manual to know what are the next five pages they need to click on on the user interface. Chatbot empowered with large language model can help you serve that purpose. If I want to go on Azure or if I want to go on AWS platform and I have no idea where to find the S3 bucket, if I want to drop a data set on S3 environment, how do I do that? Well, you can read the instruction manual if this is the first time you're doing it. You can ask someone, right? If you're working in a team, you can ask your colleague, you can ask your boss, or you can ask the Amazon Q. Amazon Q will say, oh yeah, click this button, here's a link, something like that. So think about how will the Gentech AI play into this picture, right? Large language model is trained on historical data um, that sometimes it's released maybe a few times a year. So we're talking about data that's relatively old data. In this case, large language model may or may not know what exactly is the API that you want to do, right? What exactly is the tool that you want to call? For example, if it's something as simple as the internet search, right? There are public APIs out there um, that's layered above Google search. You can invoke those APIs. You can consider that as a tool. And then uh, this will give your large language model the ability to search news, to check weather report, things like that. These are the information that large language model would have otherwise not known, right? It's considered a unique piece of information from a database that's lively being updated. So if that is the case, there is a need for engineers to come in to build a scaffolding around the large language model so that the LLM can then successfully communicate with this API. If I start a conversation with a chatbot, are you just chit-chatting, talking about something non-important, off-topic, uh, tell me a joke or whatever, right? Or are you actually asking weather? Are you actually asking the LLM to conduct the internet search? which in each case triggers a particular predefined and unique API call, right? In this particular example, 
internet search is a particular API call. There's agreed upon schema. The weather forecast is a particular API call with a predefined schema. So the scaffolding here refers to the code that's in the infrastructure around this LLM invocation so that LLM now knows, okay, we're not just chit-chatting anymore. We actually need a tool. And this tool is to search weather. This tool may be uh, needs an internet search, something like that. So a lot of this scaffolding actually comes down to what we call it today as agentic framework. So for the sake of this episode, when I say agentic framework, the scaffolding is what I'm referring to. In the beginning, maybe we're talking about some sort of router, right? It identifies or even better classifies the conversation content and it understood what that content is so that it knows how to route the conversation, right? If it's a general conversation, chit-chatting, no important things being discussed, just off-topic conversation, then there's no API call included. Sometimes the router can say, hey, wait a second, we need to invoke this tool. Let's call this tool. Maybe it's a internet search, weather forecast calculator, or whatever APIs that's existing in your company's portfolio. So all that could be true, so that router can be implemented at scale, and there could be a client side and server side, and that becomes model context protocol, or also known as MCP. So what I'm really driving at is before today's release of the transformer reinforcement learning package, all of that is still being developed. Lots of engineers is in that field and trying to figure out the scaffolding and how to efficiently set up the standard. MCP is a very important concept and it's a very novel design from Anthropic and they're actually able to convince many folks to adopt that concept, right? But with this release from Hugging Face, if anyone is able to come here, grab a cheap lower level GPU, fine tune a small language model with less than billion parameters, then what is the point of MCP? What is the point of the scaffolding around it? There isn't really if your model now knows exactly what is the output that you need, right? If I talk to a model and model knows exactly I need to make a tool calling and the model says, here's the name of the tool because the definition is X, Y, Z. Then there's no scaffolding around it that's being needed necessarily because the model already know what tools to call. Then you can just route the conversation to invoke that tool and that'll be the end of the story. So I think it's an important shakeup. That's why I want to do this episode to really drive into the heart of this conversation and also raise a little bit of alert for people like me that's in this field, that's kind of building this on a day-to-day -day level and just want to say it could be a change of type from here, right? Instead of building that next generation of MCP, maybe now the question is, how do you build the iterative fine-tuning pipeline so that you can get a model to better know your API portfolio out of the box? If you liked the episode, hit subscribe and like, and I'll see you in the next one.